Sure. Uh, my name is Gilia Buchstein, and uh, I'm the director of marketing for Windows Embedded. So I work in the Windows Embedded business unit, and uh, I manage the team that does product management, product marketing, uh, product planning, all of the marketing stuff. Okay. So you're in the embedded group now, but you've yes. been at Microsoft for a while. So what's your background? How did you get here? Sure. Uh, I've been at Microsoft 13 years, uh, 13 and a half, and um, I, uh, I'm a developer by background. Um, so I uh, am from Canada, grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, was at a large SI, then had a startup in the oil and gas industry, and joined Microsoft in our consulting services organization. And then went through a variety of roles from consulting, where I was more development, to then more infrastructure, to then technical pre-sales, uh, and then eventually moved here to Redmond in 99. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've been through a variety of roles. I used to be in our developer relations group, uh, Visual Studio Enterprise Evangelism. Uh, I ran SQL Server Communications for the recent 2005 launch. That was a ton of fun. Uh, then a brief stint in unified communications, real-time communication stuff, and mm -hmm. now here. Mm -hmm. So a long, sword journey, but now I'm here. Okay. So Microsoft is just a huge place, right? Yeah. So many different products and technologies. So why embedded? Why? You obviously had a choice. You could have gone <laughs> pretty much anywhere. So why embedded? Um, you know, when I was looking around, I, I, I've been in a few different groups now at Microsoft and a few different roles. So I've been in very large businesses, you know, SQL servers, uh, about a two and a half billion dollar business, mm -hmm. and uh, so you get to work on a large product with a very large kind of horizontal space. I've been in small groups, the unified communications piece, the real time piece is, you know, about a hundred million, growing quickly. What I loved about Windows Embedded was it kind of had elements uh, of both of those, and that's sort of unique at Microsoft. So. It's got the scope of a, a large product. You know, it's Windows, so it's very broadly applicable. The embedded space, as you know, is everything from sewing machines to set-top boxes to portable devices. So it's extremely broad, but it's got the the opportunity of a startup. Right. You know, it's a smaller group. Uh, it's a group where we really look at the business end to end, which is uh, rare at Microsoft, as mm -hmm. in many large companies these days. Usually you, you have a business spread out amongst multiple groups. Here we're sort of an end-to-end -end business unit. And, you know, I looked at this and said, wow, it's got all of the complexity and breadth of the Windows client business, plus edit, added unique complexity and interesting challenges for embedded mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, about a tenth of the resources. Right. That's a unique <laughs> challenge. I like that. That sounds like fun. Okay. So plus my boss is a great guy, so I kind of like I, I like working for people I like. That's good, kind of cool. Good. So you've been in the embedded group for how long now? Uh, let's see. It's what now? Mid February, so it'll be three months. Okay. So has anything surprised you or or kind of captured you during that three months period about the embedded business? Uh, boy, what hasn't? Uh, it's been just a huge learning experience. The, this business is unlike anything else I've done at Microsoft. Um, you know, we deal, we are one step further removed from the end user of the products than we are anywhere else. So when we sell software, uh, we deal through partners that use that software to build applications. We deal with hardware makers that put the software onto machines. But we usually have a really good insight into the end customer. Mm -hmm. You know, we understand IT, we understand the consumers that are using Windows. Here, we are one step further away because we do sort of sell the platform through distributors. We are very dependent on our partners who make some of the underlying hardware, the boards, the board support packages. In other words, there are so many pieces that go into the final embedded device. And then the actual devices vary so broadly yeah. that for us to have an understanding of all of our end customers is, is basically impossible. Uh, and so what we've actually been thinking about in this business is, you know, how do we think about it? We, we know we think about it as a broad, general embedded platform. And so we have to do great things for developers. And we have to keep thinking about developers and how do we make embedded developers more productive? How do we let them 
be more successful. There's way too many devices that never make it from concept to production mm -hmm. because the tools are too complicated, the boards don't work, and the board support packages aren't there. So how do we create a platform and actually an ecosystem of people who do provide board support packages, who do provide support, so that people, frankly, are more successful when they dream up a cool device and then you know get it into production. So we know we have to think of it that way, but we also are starting to think about what are some targeted focus areas where we do want to understand the end customer better. So you know we know that we want to think more about IT. And one of the interesting things is the sort of phenomena that we're seeing across Microsoft of, um, you know, there's lots of interesting people call it lots of different things, but, but call it the, the expansion of the intranet. It's basically the idea that IT uh, have to manage things that are not generally in their environment. So it's gone from managing your sort of standard servers and desktop PCs to how do you think about the ATMs that are part of your business or the industrial robots that are part of your business or the laptops that may actually not be part of your domain but still interact with your corporate data or the handsets that your uh, employees are, are uh, carrying or the custom devices that your employees may be carrying to do their business. As an IT person, how do you manage those, provision those, think about those from a security perspective? We think we need to understand that better. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few vertical areas where people are doing really interesting things in embedded, um, such as retail, manufacturing, healthcare, where we think we might want to understand the end scenarios a bit better. Um, so. The need for us to do that has been surprising. The, the huge variety of applications for the software uh, has been surprising. Uh, it's been very pleasantly surprising to see all the ways people use Windows Embedded. I would also say recently, just last week, uh, you and I were at, at a conference in Germany called Embedded World. I was blown away by the interest in uh, a new embedded technology that we're currently calling the .NET Micro Framework. Right. It's the platform that, that comes out of this thing I'm wearing, the Spotwatch, uh, but it's, it's really taking embedded development and bringing the power and ease of .NET into that. So really kind of changing the bar in terms of what it takes to build applications that run on even the smallest devices. Right. Uh, we think of that as a pretty exciting addition to the Windows Embedded family, and I've been actually really surprised by uh, how excited partners are and the community is ab about that technology. I was blown away, you know, partners were making up signs that say, talk about the .NET Micro Framework <laughs> here, and putting them up in their booths. So exactly. that's always kind of cool to see. So that that's, uh, raises an interesting question. So you talk about the Windows Embedded family, which now comprises of the .NET Micro Framework, uh, CE, XP Embedded, and Windows Embedded for Point of Service. Do we really need a range of embedded operating systems? Or, or do you think there is, there's just one solution that fits everything? Yeah, it, you know, we think about that question all the time, right? When we look at our business, we have a portfolio of products, and we're always interested in saying, do we have the right portfolio to meet not just today's needs, but actually sort of emerging requirements? Our thinking right now is we may actually need a broader portfolio rather than a smaller portfolio. That can change over time as hardware evolves. But when we look at it today, we actually see this great opportunity to have software that runs from the smallest devices up through PC-like devices. So there's a range of device support, but also supports a range of um, call it complexity requirements. So some folks that are uh, platform device platform, OS platform developers, are going to want a super flexible toolkit where they can really build their own OS and dramatically customize what they get there. And CE provides that today. Um, the XPE toolkit provides that to a slightly lesser degree. But we actually see more needs than that for people who say, you know, I don't want to build my own OS. I want to take an OS, configure it to reduce footprint, make it more secure, lock down the UI so that I don't get you know error boxes popping up on my airport display terminal and I want to do that in an easy way mm -hmm. um, and so we think we can have more offerings there where we offer a broader range of solutions from smallest devices to largest devices but also from 
sort of low-level complexity build your own OS to it's basically a Windows OS that you configure down to, to uh, match the footprint of the device that you're building. And by doing that, by expanding our portfolio, we can hopefully get more folks using an embedded OS where it makes sense. So, you know, this the airport display terminal scenario, I, I'm sick of seeing displays that show a Windows update balloon or an error box. And it's because someone took a PC and took a PC OS and stuffed that in a kiosk box. And, wrote an application. Yeah, wrote an app and yeah. sort of called it embedded OS. The right solution for that would have been to use one of our embedded OSs and configure the UI, configure the experience so that it's a true device and it, it's suited for their specific app. And I think we can right size, we can get more people using an embedded OS if we sort of give more offerings that are suited to their needs. Right. So that's our current thinking. Okay.